Hello and welcome to my review of the Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Priest Dominus. A little bit of a mouthful. This model uh, separately will cost you £22. Um, alternatively, you get him in the uh, new Warhammer 40,000 expansion set uh, called Forgebane, uh, which costs you £95. So in a way, if you really wanted this model and you didn't want to buy them separately, you can just see that all the other models in the set you're getting for £73 or so. I need to point out it is the same model that came out, what, four years ago? With the uh, Skitari and subsequent Cult Mechanicus um, releases. So this set is great. Really easy, straightforward, put together. Um, not really many issues. The only issues you, you might have is sort of painting it. Um, Mechanicus, you know, they do require uh, a lot of investment in painting and I can, I can completely understand um, why so many people uh, spray the parts first, paint them and then glue them together because it's very difficult to get all your highlighting and things right in between all the robes without, you know, painting over, you know, metal and things that you've already done. Um, but having said that, I always like to try and build all of my models completely uh, so that I can review them as a sort of full full model. Um, I've slightly changed mine. I've got two of these now. Um, I've gone for this kind of rectangle, rectangular kind of head um, that's different than the, the hood. I do prefer the hood, uh, even though this one's on the Cult Mechanicus um, Codex uh, front page. Um, and I've also changed the weapons. Um, I've got the Volkite weapon and the Serpenta, I think it is, uh, but I'll go through those in the rules in a moment, instead of the other two weapons, which is on my other uh, Tech Priest. Still, fantastic looking model, uh, very kind of grim dark. really liked where Games Workshop uh, were going with, uh, with this. Uh, with the range and uh, I only just wish that they'd brought out more and more models and things for uh, Mechanicus. Forge World have done a good job, uh, they've been bringing out quite a few variations. Uh, there's a nice selection now of Grimdark models there, they're about to get the, the big termite drill thing um, and it looks like they are still investing uh, some resources into uh, the, the kind of Horus Heresy um, Mechanicum kind of range. Yes, Mechanicus are missing out on a uh, transport at the moment uh, for 40k and flyers and things like that, um, but hopefully we'll get them in the, in the future. So yeah, about this model, quite straightforward, uh, simple to build, very quick and easy. You won't have any problems with this one. Uh, the only problems you might have is these kind of um, weak points, um, like this little claw thing, maybe his arms, uh, but uh, other than that, um, quite a nice little kit and it won't take too long to um, put them together. Okay, uh, just because I've been reviewing uh, lots of other models today, I've got the Cryptek. Um, the Cryptek is taller, plus he's brought along a friend and uh, the old Dominus is uh, feeling a little bit sad because does he have a motion? Probably not. He's feeling uh, negative one at the moment, but still, um, that just goes to show you that the Cryptek is taller. The main bulk of the cryptic model is taller, although the axe is is taller uh, than the cryptic. If you want to be really, really sort of accurate with it, which I'm sure machines would, and I'm sure this Dominus would say that he is taller. Um, so that's uh, next to a cryptic, next to a lich guard. So yeah, taller than a lich guard. So therefore, he'd be taller than all the Skatari. I don't have the Skatari with me at the moment. Um, you might want to see him next to the Armager, which doesn't even fit on the uh, screen, but there you go. The Armager's definitely taller, and definitely taller than his axe. <laughs> and it actually works really well with an Armager uh, next, next to him. They definitely share their aesthetic cues uh, quite well. And then next to a couple of Space Marines. So you've just got a normal Space Marine. One of these, when I first got this Dominus, I thought he was huge. And then obviously Belisarius Call uh, was released and he, he's even bigger. Um, but yeah, I, I was quite taken aback just how big one of these tech priests was compared to just a, uh, you know, seven foot tall um, superhuman, uh, I want to I wanna call it. But uh, yeah, next to a Primaris as well. Primaris probably could take him down, I reckon. But, uh, but there you go. Hopefully those size comparisons help. 
I believe I've been doing this in uh, the wrong order and the machine god would not be very pleased. So let's just uh, show you these spare parts. You get this huge amount of spare parts here, <laughs> um, which just consists of the, uh, the alternate weapons, um, which is the conversion beamer and the macro stubber, I think. Is it macro stubber? I think it is. But, uh, but yeah, and also this hooded head, which, which I do prefer. I do prefer this hooded head um, just because it works better with the rangers, in my opinion. But there we go. The, the oblong kind of rectangle head works better for kind of steampunk, maybe. And that, that's the feel you get with, uh, with Mechanicum anyway, um, Cult Mechanicus. Very, very steampunky kind of vibe you know machines but yeah they've got wood on some of their weapons um and loads of pistons and you can just imagine them hissing and whirring and clicking and making all kinds of uh you know machine like uh noises blurting scrap code and things like that anyway there are the uh, the spare parts and now this is my part of the review where i'll talk to you about all of the rules for the tech priest ominous um, i'll cover them in depth because I'm covering all of the Adeptus Mechanicus and all the units that I own. So, the Tech Priest Dominus, you'll find him in the HQ section of your codex. He will cost you seven power points, which is a bit more than double a normal Tech Priest Engine Seer, uh, which they added, um, and that model's really cool, uh, and I'll, I'll be doing a review of him. Um, and a little bit more than half the price of Belisarius, which is 13 power points. But match play points cost wise, he will cost you 125 points base, and then you've got to buy his, his Omniscient Axe, Volkite Blaster, and Macro Stubber, which is only 10 points more. Um, so he's gonna cost you 135 points match play. Uh, I think that's still quite decent for what he brings to the table. Uh, no pun intended. You can, of course, replace the Volkite Blaster with an Eradication Ray, uh, which is 14 points, um, so it's six points more than a Volkite Blaster, and the Phosphor Serpenter, which again is more points, it's six points. So it's an extra 20 points, so it's 145 points instead of 135. So a bit more pricey if you wanted to swap his weapons out. You are getting his axe for free. So his profile then. His movement is six inches, his weapon skill is three plus, ballistic skill is two plus, strength four, toughness four, five wounds, three attacks, leadership eight, and a save of two plus. Would have been great if his leadership was nine or 10 even. Uh, would have been great if his toughness was five because he's basically a machine and Belisarius's toughness is six anyway. You know, kind of sort of put him on par almost as some of the Necron units, but still, it is what it is. So, why are you getting him? Mainly because of his weapons. His, his stat line's good with the ballistic skill two and his save of two plus, but you're getting him for his weapons. Now, the Omniscient Axe, which is exactly the same as the one Belisarius Caller's got. So just because he's, you know, high and mighty, sat in his, you know, iron throne, he doesn't get a better axe than anybody else. The axe gives the tech priest a plus one strength, minus two AP, and a damage of two. No extra fancy abilities or anything like that, it's just a straight up, basically strength five axe with AP minus two. Where it really gets interesting though, is the range weapons. So the main two range weapons you're gonna give the tech priest is either the eradication ray or the Volkite Blaster. Now, he comes with the Volkite Blaster, so I'm gonna talk about that one first. The Volkite Blaster is a range 24 inch weapon, heavy three, strength six, AP zero, damage one, but each time you make a wound roll of a six plus for the weapon, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. So that's great. It's definitely getting three shots, uh, strength six. The AP is nothing though, but you do have uh, a chance when, you, when wounding, of getting that uh, mortal wound. I'm not gonna concentrate too heavily on which is, which is better, because I've got two Tech Priest Ominouses with the two weapon loadouts available. Um, but I will say that the Eradication Ray uh, is the same range, 24 inches, it's heavy D3, so you're throwing that random you know, shots into play here. It is the same strength, strength six, but it is a better AP, it's got minus two, and attacks from the weapon that target enemies at eight inches or less are resolved with an AP of minus four and damage of D3. And that's what sets it apart. The eradication ray, although statistically one could say 
you've got a higher probability of getting a two or more shots, um, which is still less than a Volkite blaster, whichever way you look at it. It has the potential. Its base armor penetration is better for the eradication ray. And if it's at eight inches, then you're getting AP minus four, but also your damage is, is again, is gonna be two or more, you know, with a, with a D3 um, probability. So the Volkite Blaster, if you definitely want three heavy shots a turn, and you want a chance of getting a mortal wound, the Eradication Ray, uh, if you want the AP minus four, and more damage, but, you know, at a shorter range. So it really depends on your play style, if you want to be up close and personal with the Tech Priest, or do you want to keep your distance a bit. With a strength of only four though, even up in it to five, and a toughness of only four, and not a huge number of attacks, I'd err on the caution of trying to keep this guy quite far back, uh, and only have him in melee as kind of like a, as a consequence of uh, the enemy happening to get too close to him. The other two ranged weapons are a fair bit smaller. You've either got the Macro Stubber or the Phosphor Serpenter. The Macro Stubber is a 12 inch five shot pistol with a strength four. That's it, that's all you get. You're getting your five shots at range of 12 inches and strength four. No other abilities or anything like that. It's nice, you know, you're getting your five shots, uh, but it's not gonna set the world on fire. The Phosphor Serpenter, however, may literally set the world on fire. It's a further ranged weapon, uh, quite a nice long range, you know, 18 inches. Um, it's assault weapon, assault one, so you're only getting your one shot, but your strength is five, your AP is better at minus one, and your damage is one. Units attacked by the weapon don't get any, bo don't gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. We've talked in length about his weapons, let's talk about his abilities. He's got the Canticles of the Omnissiah, and I will go through these in detail. So all units with this ability gain a bonus during the battle, depending on the Canticle of the Omnissiah currently being canted. Uh, at the start of each battle round, you pick which Canticle of the Omnissiah from the table is in effect for the duration of the battle round. The same Canticle may not be picked twice during the same battle, so you can only pick it once. Alternatively, you can randomly determine which Canticle of the Omnissiah is in effect by rolling a d6 and consulting the table below. Note, if you randomly determine a canticle, it takes effect even if the same canticle has been in effect earlier in the battle. If you have a battle-forged army, units only receive the bonus if every model in their detachment has this ability. So, you can either pick one, or you can randomise it. If you randomise it, you can pretty much use the same one over and over. So the canticles. Incantation of the Iron Soul means you can re-roll morale tests for affected units. Litany of the Electromancer you roll a d6 for each enemy unit that is within one inch of any affected units, and on a roll of a six, the unit being rolled for suffers d3 mortal wounds. Chant of the Remorseless Fist, you can re-roll any hit rolls of one for affected units in the fight phase. Shroud Psalm, affected units gain the bonus to their armor saving throws as if they were in cover. Units already in cover are unaffected. Invocation of the Machine Might, affected units have plus one strength and Benediction of the Omnissiah. You can reroll failed hit rolls of a one for affected units in the shooting phase. So there you go. That's a nice buff that this unit brings. Um, you know, everything from re-rolling hit rolls of a one uh, to giving them plus one strength uh, to also re-rolling failed hit rolls of a one. You know, nice set of canticles there. And yes, you can choose them at the start of each round, but once you've used them, you can't use it again unless you're randomizing them. That's one of his abilities. <laughs> his other abilities, so he's got Master of Machines. At the end of the movement phase, the model can repair a single friendly Forge World or Questa Mechanicus model within three inches, but not itself. It says that specifically. If the model being repaired is a Forge World model, it regains D3 lost wounds. If it is a Questor Mechanicus model, it regains one lost wound. And a model may not be the target of the Master of Machines ability more than once per turn. You've got the ability to uh, repair um, Forge World models, not, not Forge World as in Games Workshop Forge World, but um, models that have the keyword Forge World, helping them regain D3 uh, lost wounds. Master Bionics, at the beginning of each of your turns, the model regains D3 lost wounds. So that kind of 
adds an additional ability on top of Master of Machines um, that uh, he can just keep regaining his, his wounds at the beginning of each of your turns. So say he's down to two wounds after the first uh, turn, the beginning of the next one, he rolls a five, then you're then back up to uh, five wounds. It doesn't specifically say whether you can go over the wound count. So say you've got uh, four wounds and you roll a d3 and you get five again. It doesn't specifically say that you'll then get seven. But I would read that as he only regains the wounds to his maximum of five. That's the way I would understand that ability. Lord of the Machine Cult. You can re-roll hit rolls of one in the shooting phase for friendly Forge World units within six inches. Now that's great. So keeping him within six inches of friendly Forge World units um, is just up in their chance. I mean, typically they've got ballistic skill three pluses anyway. Uh, some have four plus, um, but it's nice that you can re-roll the, the hit rolls of a one. And then finally, his last ability, he's got a refractor field. So he gets a five plus invulnerable, both shooting and melee. So a two plus normal, five plus invulnerable, a nice number of five wounds and a toughness four. He's a solid HQ choice, not too pricey as well. You know, 135 points, not too bad uh, for what he brings to the table. He's okay in combat. He's even better at shooting uh, and, he's, and he's quite survivable with his two plus and his five plus and his ability to regain lost wounds. The main reason you'll get him though is to be repairing the Forge World units and the canticles and helping with shooting. He's going to really help uh, all the other units um, with those other abilities. How does he compare to Belisarius Call though? Um, well Belisarius is you know almost double the power points cost if you're looking at 135 points, Belisarius is another 115 points. He's 250 points. However, he does have a better weapon skill at two plus, a better strength at five, much better toughness at six. He's got three more wounds at eight, one more attack, a better leadership, and he does have that very, very tasty Lord of Mars ability, which gives him a six inch bubble for re-rolling any hit rolls in the shooting phase for friendly Mars units. He's got a Mechadendrite Hive and a Solar Atomizer, which is a strength 10 Assault D3 weapon. So he's just like a tech priest, but on another level. Um, and it's up to you whether he's worth it. Personally, I would never leave home without a call, but I'll go more into depth about him in his own review, which I will be doing uh, as part of this Adeptus Mechanicus coverage uh, of all the units. Anyway, what do you guys think of the Tech Priest Dominus? Do you think he's a decent HQ, especially for the points, especially when comparing him to, uh, you know, the Crypt Tech is mainly a buffing character rather than a, a melee or shooting character. Comparing him to, uh, I don't know, the, the Custodes uh, HQ, uh, I know they're on the same side and things, but, you know, how does he compare to other HQs? Um, in your opinion, in all the games that you've played. Please do put it in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.